Okay, thank you everybody for coming today. Thank you everybody for coming today. And um, we're doing something different. The 4th of July usually is associated with being in a park, eating hot dogs, and um, hamburger and fireworks. But fireworks we can still do after we finish here. But we decided to do something a little different. The idea came from Dennis Prager with a radio show host. We threw the idea out about two years ago to the universe to make the 4th of July something different, to remember what America is about, to remember why America is unique, and what is this experiment supposed to mean to us, and how do we pass this to our children? following in the footsteps of the Jewish tradition, which narrowed it down to a science, how to transfer information from one generation to another. There is an event that took place 3,300 years ago. A bunch of people came out of slavery, out of Egypt, and they walked in the desert and they received the Torah on Mount Sinai. And they, and they all stood there, they all saw God. And they, was, they were involved in this personally. But human memory is short. So how do you transfer that experience 3,300 years forward so every child would feel like they themselves stood there before Mount Sinai and saw the fire and heard the voices, the noise, and received the Torah. How do you transfer that experience forward? For that, there is something unique that was designed. It's called the Passover Seder. The Passover Seder, Seder in Hebrew means order. So there is an order of a ritual. It's a ritual for memory. And you get a booklet like this that is called a Haggadah, which means the teller, tell. So each one of the participants gets a Haggadah, and they read the Seder, they read the order of the ritual. And they read, we were slaves in Egypt, he came out, and there's a story, and the whole thing, and they keep reciting it every year. And the children are involved. And then there is food involved. Because if you don't have food, you don't have a ritual. We need food. Good people. Right? So this is the design that we decided to follow for the 4th of July. Because how do we transfer, we manage in 200 years to batch the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> 200 years is not 3,300 years. So if we want the American experience to go down for 3,300 years, then we have to do something drastically today. Because we're losing it. Amen. So we need to design something that will teach our children that they can say, they can feel as if each one of them were present at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. This is the, this is the message of the Passover Seder. Every person should feel as he himself stood by the Mount Sinai getting the Torah. So if you say that year in and year out, since you're a child, eventually you're gonna feel that way. If we say this year in and year out and we teach our children, they're gonna grow up. Nobody can take knowledge from anyone. Nobody can take knowledge. If a child knows by heart the Bill of Right, nobody can take it away from them. Even there will be a leader that will come up and say, that's not important. Here I have a better agenda. Here I have something better to, for, for you to deal with. 
No, you cannot take it away from them. But you have to start early when they're kids. And that is exactly what we're trying to start today. And hopefully we can improve each one of you. I want you to be a judge. I want you to be an advisor because this is an experiment. But we put together something with John's help, uh, collecting the material and putting this together. But this is not a final form by any means. We want to improve on it. We want to put illustrations, appropriate illustrations, stories from the War of Independence and other historical events that America went through and that really define what America is. So we will improve on it. And if you have any comments or suggestions, we'll be happy to hear that and use that for next year. Hopefully by next year, Kiki here, our friend, is going to videotape this and we're going to put it on YouTube and hopefully more people are going to see it, like it, and imitate it. So this should be proliferating and, and going viral, viral and hopefully in a year or two, most of America is going to do a 4th of July Seder celebration. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. So we will start. I want everybody to participate. So we, we look at look at your books, your booklets, and we will start with page two, where John Marcin is going to read the introduction. John. Thank you. Put the hat on. Pass the hat to John. Everyone that is reading is going to put a hat on. It's going to look better. It's going to look better on the video. Go ahead. The nose. You look wonderful. All right. Introduction. Today we take a few minutes to remember what the Fourth of July is about, and to remind ourselves how fortunate we are to be Americans. Before America was a nation, it was a dream. A dream shared by many people from many nations over many generations, emanating from the very pages of the Hebrew text of the Torah given to Moses and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. On Mount Sinai came the idea that man was created in the image of his creator and was endowed with certain unalienable rights, among them the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to pursue one's individual happiness. We're on page two, bottom. On page two. It's okay. Just the, the American journey began with the pilgrims in 1620 who fled Europe so that they could be free to participate, practice their religion. It continued throughout the 17th century as more and more people came to, to the place that came to be known as the New World. In this new world, where you came from didn't matter. What mattered was where you, or where you were headed. As more and more people came, they started to see themselves not as Europeans, but as a new people in the new world, as Americans. They felt blessed. The land was spacious. The opportunities limitless. By 1776, a century and a half after the first pilgrims landed, this new liberty-loving people were ready to create a new nation. And on July 4th of that, of that year, they did just that. They pronounced themselves to be free of the rule of the English king. We know this momentous event is being heralded by the Declaration of Independence. Thank you. Now, as we start, as we start meetings in this country, and it's somewhat controversial right now, the pledge, people want to take from it under God, and I think that is the most important component. Amen. 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 Yeah. So let's face the flag and recite with me the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and 
don't have too see. many children, so we'll take the young among us. I'm just <laughs> On page four, you have something that is imitating the exchange that is taking place on the Passover Seder, which is the children ask questions and then they get the answers. So maybe Stephanie can ask the same, the, the first question, and, um, okay. and you can answer it. Why do we celebrate the 4th of July? Why do we celebrate the 4th of July? Yes. Because, because the 4th of July is the birthday of the American people. The day we chose to become the United States of America, a free nation with a government that serves its people and not people who serve a king. Okay. Uh, Larry, you'll be the second kid. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Why is America different from all other countries? Because in 1776, all countries were based on nationality, religion, ethnicity, or geography. But America was created on the basis of a set of ideas. This is still true today. Thank you. Yoni, ask this third question. What are Trump's ideas? Well, we need to hear you. What are those ideas? Yeah. These ideas summarize what America is all about. They are a great on every American point. They are liberty, God be trust. Many united once more, or out of many. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, what does it mean? What does it mean in God we trust? God. It means that America was founded on the belief that our rights and liberties have been granted to us by the Creator not a human ruler. Therefore, they cannot be taken away by people or by the whims or capricious, capricious of an arbitrary ruler. Okay. Now, on the Seder, of the Passover Seder, we ask, how is this day different from all that, how is this night different from all other nights? Because as you recall, the events of Passover happen during the night that first night when they left Egypt. And here we ask, how is this day different from all other days? Uh, maybe Jackie can help us here. We drink sweet iced tea to remember the Boston Tea Party. Okay, where's the iced tea? Okay. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. <laughs> okay, can, can we get some iced tea? Yes. Iced tea? We have a plate next to some of you. There are some plates here. And on the plates, we see things in different colors. There was a controversy, uh, uh, th there was a debate whether, w what to use for the white color. Okay, and I said marshm marshmallows, and it came down as uh, whipped cream. Ooh. Okay, so whatever it is, it's a symbol. It's a symbol for something, and uh, the tea is coming. What does the tea symbolizes? Thank you. No taxes without representation. Steve, tell us what the tea symbolizes. No taxation without representation. Hey, what does this mean? They can't just pass taxes on us just because. Oh, they can. They did. They did. We're okay. not supposed to. Be. But we are going to stand against it. Oh, against it. Wait. So standing is an important component of being free. Right. If you don't stand, then people can do with you whatever they want. And how would you stand? When, when would you know when to stand, when not to stand, when to resist, when not to resist? How would you know? Because we have, we have God-given rights. We, we have God-given rights.
given rights, and how would you know those rights? Uh, if you're raised with the Bible teaching, you can't tell them that. Ah, so we have a whole book telling us what That's these right. rights are. This book is called Bible, right? So luckily, we graciously, God gave us all the instructions, and that depends on education. If we're not educated, then everything can be taken away from us. Think of it as if someone burglarized your home. You come home, and the unthinkable happens. And then you go to the insurance company, and they say, what did you have in your home? And you say, I, I don't remember. If you don't remember, sir, then I don't say you deserve what you had, what, what's taken from you, but you're not going to get it back. Okay? If you didn't take photos of it, if you don't remember, then there was no argument. And the same is here. As a nation, if we don't know, how would we know what is taken away from us? How would we know? And every day, every day there are things eroding, and we're not paying attention because we don't know. So when you don't know, and things are taken, things are taken away from you, then you're not aware. And 10 years down the road, you'd say, wow, look what they've done. But that might, may be too late. So this is the iced tea, the sweet iced tea we drink. And uh, of course, we eat salty pretzels to remember the tears of the soldiers and this and that. We don't have pretzels. So just imagine. Imagine we have pretzels. <laughs> you have pretzels. Um, Mr. John. We ring the bell because... Well, put your glasses and then ring the bell so we can hear it on the video. <laughs> In that order? Yes. We ring the bell to recall the ringing of the Liberty Bell, which was rung to announce, to announce the surrender of the King's Army. On the bell are inscribed these words from the Book of Leviticus. Proclaim, proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Leviticus 25.10. Thank you. And we also eat strawberries and blueberries and we dip them in cream. And why do we do that? <laughs> Anyone? The red, white, and blue of our flag, the symbol of the United States of America. Thank you. So now you acquire to pick up the colors and dip them in the other color and experience experience the colors of the American flag. Yeah. Very good. Sweet. Sweet flag. Oh, sweet strawberry. Yes. The pretzel shape was actually designed by a monk, symbolizing prayer. Great hands. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know that. That's good. Tip it. Danny works at Antian's Pretzels. Nothing. Wonderful. Do you want to join us? Oh, I will. Okay. Since Linda tells me where. <laughs> okay. So this is the first part. This is the first part of the seder, of of this order. And as we do in the Passover seder. We break for food, and then we continue to conclude the ritual. So we can break for food now. I just want to say a word of thanks to Steve, Pastor Steve, for allowing us to do it here. This is an experiment. It's the first time. We didn't really know how it's going to pan out, how it's going to play. Um, the decoration is beautiful. The tables are set up wonderfully. The place is great, and hopefully that would be a historical beginning, and we'll go from here. Um, that that would just be, you know, um, great thanks to you, and we'll continue from here. So please wait for food, and then we'll continue. Yes, Jackie. 
I just wanted to mention that I have been listening to 960 all day long, where they have been having accounts of how we acquired our freedom. And um, a young man had called in with a wonderful idea to have, um, by next July 4th, have everyone in the country that is willing to sign the Declaration of Independence. And you know how I think this gets started is not just one person, but me, but other people telling other people. And how wonderful would it be for churches, other organizations, to start, to start, get their copy of the of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and start having everyone sign it. Now, I don't know what the end result is, whether they want to send it to Washington, but I think they want to make a big impression on people. Washington is the last place they want to see something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We need to go to the tea party. So that's just my little plant idea type of thing. So run well, you with know, it, if you, you will. You know how they have that wall for all the, all the beds that die? Mm -hmm. Well, if you got big blown up pieces of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and all that stuff and put them like a wall and had people sign in the, yes. space, in the space where they could, yes. then there would be plenty of room and then they would be able to walk along and see and we could put it like around Capitol Hill or something. Yes. Yeah. And Jackie, thank you for your help today. You've been instrumental in yeah. making oh, this happen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Please go and pick up something to eat and talk to each other and then we'll come back. <laughs> what we want to do is go over some things that are important in order to understand the American values and where they came from. 1776 was not the beginning of American values. This is why we stuck in here the Ten Commandments. Those are the universal laws and rules for society to flourish and succeed. Whether we are on the earth, on another continent, on another culture, or on another planet, if we have a human society that allows stealing and murder and lying, the society would not last. So these are the basic fundamental values and morals and rules for society to succeed. What we're going to do is just read them. Each one of us will read another one. So let's start here and just read the first commandment on page 6. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods besides me. Besides me? Well, you realize translations are varied, and uh, they might be not very accurate or very good. Uh, actually, the Hebrew says, you should not have no other gods over my face. Oh, okay. Wow. So that 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 is a, a literal translation that I'm just making now, but it gives you a little bit of a little bit more uh, feel to what what he really meant here. Okay. Uh, second. You shall not make for yourself a sculpture image or any likeness of what is in the heavens above. On the earth below, or in the waters under the earth, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. Okay, thank you. Now you know that in the ancient cultures, the transfer of knowledge went through pictures, through handiwork, through sculptures, through wall paintings. That was the first time where a God came down and he says, do not do these things. That means that from now on, everything is going to be written down. 
Now, when you have a sculpture, or when you have a wall painting, or when you tell a story, like the story of uh, the alien by Homer, it took 600 years before it was put down in writing. And those 600 years, the story was transferred by storytellers around the fire. They were telling the story. Now in 600 years of people, different people telling the story, you can realize how many changes that might happen all through this time. So you're not getting the original. God wants to preserve his works. So they will be transferred 4,000 years down the road in the same way, exactly the same way that he gave them. So enough of these paintings, enough of these sculptures, enough of all of this stuff. From now on, we're going to have everything written down. And when you have something written down, you can't change it. The next generation is going to read it, and the one after that is going to read the same thing, and so on and so forth until the end of time. Three. means do not utter, do not carry, okay, do not say. So it's not don't only don't swear by the name of God, which it's a problem by itself. But if you don't have to use the name of God, don't use it in vain. Don't use it for little reason or no reason. So that's one thing that the translation left open for a lot of things that I see in this country. There are a lot of groups that insist of saying the name of God and um, it says specifically, do not use the name of God in vain. Not that he cares or I care, but if you have something that you designate as something so holy and so special, then treat it that way, right? Out of respect. Yeah. When they see in the text, when they see the Jehovah name, which is supposedly the original <coughs> name of God or, or the, the explicit name of God, they use another name to replace it out of respect. It is it is not written in the Torah that you have to do that. It is a, a custom that people adopt it in order to show their respect to the name of God. And by the way, the Jehovah name of God is made of four letters. And those four letters, if you break it down grammatically in Hebrew, means past, present, and future. So really, the explicit name of God, which we call the Jehovah name of God, all it is, it's showing some of his characteristics. He was, he is, and he will be. That's all it is. So it's not even something that, because I had this argument with the pastor of Jehovah, you know, pastor, and um, he said God had a name, that's his name, and I said, God doesn't have a name plate on his office, <laughs> it's God who created the heavens and the earth, so you want to tell me he has one name that encompasses everything that God is, how, how is it possible? We're just people, and we use words. So this is just a, a one name or one combination of letters that reflects some of the characteristics of God, of his being being timeless, being, you know, he was, he is, and he will be. But to treat it as his uh, only name, it's, it's a little bit, you know, far-fetched. Okay. Four. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or daughter, 
your male or female slave, or your cattle, or the stranger who is within your settlements. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and all that is in them, and he ceased on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Thank you. Here is another big argument. God <laughs> rested on the seventh day. It doesn't say God rested on the seventh day. God didn't dig ditches and was so tired he needed a rest on the seventh day. This is a spiritual command. This is not about resting. Okay? God sees the creative work that he was doing. It's in Hebrew, you have a difference between hard labor and creative work. In all through Genesis 1 and 2, all through the creation, there is no mention of labor. It's only creative work. Melacha versus Abudah. Okay? So he did Melacha, which is creative work. And uh, he ceased from his creative work on the seventh day in order to designate a period of time for spiritual growth, for getting closer, for getting closer to God for us, okay? So we have to treat the day as a special holy space in the continuum of time that we take out in order to get closer to God. We should not treat it just as merely time for rest go to the mall, shopping, or uh, go to the football game. Uh, those are fine things to do, but don't associate them with the command to keep the Sabbath, because to keep the Sabbath is a spiritual order. It is not something that is uh, physical. Okay. How about six? Oh, yes, fine, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Honor your father and your mother, then you may long endure on the land that the Lord your God is assigning to you. Okay, thank you. So, does it say love your father and mother? No. You know something interesting? It says love your neighbor. But... It doesn't say love your father and mother. What is that all about? <laughs> what do you think? It's quite a question. <laughs> it's quite a question, right? Because your father and mother could be jerks. <laughs> but it doesn't exempt you. It doesn't exempt you from respecting them. Honoring and respect is a cultural structure. This is a structure that you have to honor, otherwise society will fall apart. So this is the command. Your father and mother may have done things that are not perfectly good with you, but it doesn't exempt you from honoring them. Honoring is different. You see, if you live in a beautiful big mansion on Camelback Mountain, and your father is living under a bridge on Van Buren, then there is something wrong with that picture, no matter what your father is about. Okay? So that's that's what this command comes to, to put in order. Okay, six. Hurry. Yes. It's the only command that comes from the promise. Thank you. That's another part of it. That it promises you. And why is that? Why does it promise you that if you honor your father and mother, then you live long on the earth I'm giving you? Is because that is the basic fundamental thing for society to, to continue and to last. So if you don't do this, you, you will not last. If you do this, that means you have a strong structure of society that will take you forward. Six. Thou shalt not murder. Okay. In many translations, you will find you should not kill. kill. Okay? There is a difference between murder and killing. Killing must sometimes be done, and sometimes it's, it's, it's part of life. We kill a chicken when we eat it, if we need to eat chicken, right? But murder is premeditated, evil thing to do to each other. 
So on the other side, it says love your your um, neighbor. And how can you love your neighbor and, and condone premeditated murder? Okay. Um, seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Another, another building block of society, another one of those building blocks that keeps society <coughs> moving forward is the family. And it's, it's the structure of the family, it's the father and the mother, and um, that's how you move forward. Number eight. Thou shalt not steal. Should we elaborate on that? Okay. What is stealing? Taking something that is not to you, not long to you, belongs to some, something else. That means that possession is recognized and, and it's important. Because to possess something, you have to put some effort into it. So recognition of your effort that went into acquiring something. For it, it, yes. It's recognizing a property right, too. You have right to property. Right to property. If you didn't have right to property, the stealing would make making sense. That's right. right. And property rights, of course, came into the um, Bill of Rights in the American Constitution. Well, it's in the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence, yeah. Pursuit of happiness is uh, meant to be the pursuit of property. Okay. Um, number nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay, that is very important. You don't want to be in a situation where somebody comes and um, say you did something, falsely accusing you, and then <coughs> go figure out and try to get him out of it. Like this uh, French guy that was uh, accused in, in New York for raping a hotel maid. Okay? After he's going through all of this, now they released him <coughs> because her credibility was not there and, and she lied before and so now he but he's already gone through all of this he was running for the presidency of France and now he's probably not going to be able to so there is a lot of damage that can be inflicted on someone else when but by false witness and that is wrong so and number 10 yes Character assassination is the same as murder. There is a concept in Hebrew that is called the Shon Hara, which is the evil tongue, which is gossip and, and, and falsely accusing someone or, or spreading rumors about someone. Yeah, all of these things are equated in the Hebrew tradition to murder. No, evil tongue. Yeah. So, so when, when you gossip or you talk evil about somebody or, or you spread rumors about someone, um, the Hebrew tradition looks at it as if you are involved in premeditated murder. Okay, this is how severe it is. When you talk about it, it's also on the internet where that happened unfortunately to a couple girls, a couple people who were character assassinated on a Facebook and unfortunately a tragic end, led it to a tragic end. That's right. Okay, number 10. <coughs> Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That is the answer, thank you, Jackie. That is the answer to the idea that we all created equal. Does this mean that we should all get equal share of everything there is? You know, in the communist system, that was the original idea. What a wonderful idea. We'll, we'll all share the same. We'll all get the same share of the pie. Okay? So what happened after a while, this, here's this brilliant guy who's an engineer and he studied all his life and all of that, and he puts all his heart into the work, and he's creating things, and he gets the same amount of money that this idiot next to him who's just taking a ride on the system and doing no work is getting. So how do you think people are made to feel? Eventually, they're going to say, I don't want to work so hard. So nobody works hard anymore. And that takes a toll on and the 
entire society. So um, here is do not cover. It's like, you know what? You work within the framework that God gave you. Your, your talents, your, your abilities, your education, whatever it is that you have, use it and don't look to the next door neighbor to see if the grass is greener there. Just do your thing and you will succeed. You don't have to compare yourself to somebody else or desire what somebody else has. Okay, so those are the Ten Commandments. And as you can see, a lot of this information, a lot of these commands found themselves into the American design, the American idea. Um, John, would you like to help us read from the few portions of the Constitution? Most I have the preamble here. Okay, just go ahead. We the people of the United States, in order to perform, or to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, you ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Okay. Yoni, would you like to continue? Most important. But we want to hear it. You have to. The most important. Urban, urban, urban declaration of independence. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay. Anyone? Would you like to continue? Well, no, no, what I'd like to say is concerning that, that document there is like an affidavit that those 56 signers signed an affidavit saying all our rights are sovereign from the Creator. Then the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights especially, wrote some of those down. And of course the text says those that are not stated belong to the people of the states. Is they, they come from the sovereign, and, and all they, the, the Constitution was set up to protect us from government tyranny. That's right. And those of you who were yesterday at, at the church service heard me talking about receiving <coughs> rights from a higher source than men, another person or, or a man. And that is important because if you receive your, your power, even if the king is the one who makes the power. And that was the situation with the English. Divine right of kings. Okay, divine rights of kings. So they take upon themselves to be the source of power for the state. And they actually own everything that is in the state. Isn't that the Queen of England still owning every, every single thing? Everyone else was subject. Okay. So what we have here is a suggestion that is different. We draw the power from a higher source. So the person at the head of the pyramid, that person that you want to call him a president or you want to call him uh, whatever you want to call him, becomes a chief administrator for God. All he is is a chief administrator that is taken upon himself to regulate the life of the state in a reasonable way. So the garbage will be picked up on time, and people will go to work, and there will be work for people to do, and all of these things, but his power is not originating from 